life and life more abundantly through Jesus Christ, uh, salvation. So interesting about the whole armor of God, the whole armor of God, uh, it, it has this helmet on our head, helmet of salvation. Yes, helmet of salvation that, you know, we receive the salvation and we got life, life, uh, life that we can aim for eternal life. You know what I'm saying? Now, in our lives. And now, of course, you see the, uh, I don't know if you saw the cartoon, Frosty's dancing and happy and full of jolly and having, you know, he's ha very happy. Well, guess what? He's jolly, supposed to represent the ideal of joy. And, of course, you know, Zachariah talks about uh, 8 and 10, the joy of the Lord is our strength. We're supposed to be Frosty's walking in joy, enjoying life and enjoying what's going on around us. And our joy is not happiness because happiness is only about emotional emotion that we feel good with what happened. But when you have the joy of the Lord is your strength, it don't matter what happened. You know what I'm saying? In spite of the problems, situations, circumstances, when you have the joy of the Lord, your strength, you will have be happy because you know the God that's going to take care of the situation, the circumstances that is going on in our lives, that we can be like Frosty and march and, and, and have fun, even though like they had an evil guy that was trying to take the hat, you know, from Frosty the Snowman. Well, that's Satan, you know, Satan's trying to take our hat. He's trying to take our salvation. Yeah. Through temptation, through all kind of wicked plans and well, wicked plots, he has been doing uh, that villain on that frosty, you know, snowman cartoon. He's trying to take our salvation away from us. We cannot allow that evil Satan to take our salvation away. Now, also that hat can also mean uh, what it says in James. Uh, the crown of life, you know, it says in James, first James, it talks about, uh, blesses the person that, that endure, uh, tr tr trials, and, trials and tribulations or they get the crown of life. Yes. You know, the crown of life is what, uh, that, uh, hat symbolized that we have life through Jesus Christ. And we need to understand that and that we're supposed to learn how to live in that life, to live in a life that uh, that we walk by faith and not by sight. We live according to what the word of God say and not what the world say. We live according to what the word of God says, not the world said, world say, sorry. And, and, and as according to what Jesus Christ told Satan, we're supposed to live by every word of what the word of God says, every word every word that is proceeded, you know what I'm saying? It's supposed to have been a agenda of Christians. So what is the next thing I got for Frosty Snowman? Well, here's interesting. So uh, it's interesting, you know, you watch the cartoon and then all of a sudden they blow, the hat blows off. Oh, this is the part I like right here that I want to talk about with Christians. The hat blows off the Salvation blows off. The crown of life blows off. What what can possibly will blow off the helmet of salvation, the crown of life? That watch this, that we would allow to blow off our heads. Oh, can that be possible? Well, it talks about in Ephesians uh uh, uh four, 4, Ephesians 4 that I always, you know, love to teach on Ephesians 4 because it shows really the blueprint of the church and what the church should be patterned by if it's going to truly become a church based upon the body of Christ, based upon everybody, you know what I'm saying, that is a Christian, not about every building, but everybody is a Christian. I believe that Ephesians 4 shows that ideal. 
See, now what will stop us, our salvation and blow it away? And what will blow up our crown of life? Well, uh, Ephesians 14, it's called that we henceforth be not more children tossed to and fro, uh-oh, and carried away, yeah, by, I'm mean, carried away about with every wind of doctrine, uh-oh, every wind of doctrine, by the sly of men, yes, too many of them out there, sly of men in their cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Yes, this is what can blow our hat off, Christians. Um, this way when the doctrine, but it's been blowing a lot of people's hats. And no, unfortunately, a lot of people don't care that their hat has been blown. And here's the thing, you know what I'm saying? Well, if you don't got, if you say that, well, I, I, my hat was, my helmet of salvation wasn't blow, blown off or my crown of life was blown off. Can you look at your life honestly and say that you're operating and walking in the power of God's salvation? And, are, and can you honestly say that you're operating in the authority that Jesus Christ died for us to have concerning the uh, operating in the crown of life? Are we truly operating as a church? You know what I'm saying? That we need to question and ask because a lot of people are believing a lot of wave wind doctrine that is contrary to the scriptures. I mean, you know, the ideal of, you know, uh, the that I present to the people concerning the idea of makeup of the church of division. I mean, this church system operates in so much division and operates in so much tradition and almost operates in so much religion and, you know, all of this stuff. And now because of that, people are teaching all kind of crazy doctrine about the word of God and saying that the this is the word of God and that is the word of God. And you know, and nobody's not addressing the ideal wrong uh, things that are, are, are have been happening throughout the church. And the thing is, but the power, see, when you, when, when the wind blows the hat off of Frosty's head, you lose power. You lose power. You, you don't have the power to move. You don't have the power to do something. You don't have the power to, uh, fulfill the purpose of what God has told you to do. You don't have the power. And that's what, well, you need to check yourself and analyze your uh, salvation and analyze the crown that represents the authority that God gives us when we operate, when we're tried and tested, as it says in James uh, 1, that we tried and tested, we will operate in the authority of of the power of God, but are we operating in the true power and authority of God, or are we like Frosty the Snowman without the hat, just standing still in the snow, doing nothing, doing nothing about what's going on in this world, and this world is getting more dark, and all kind of wickedness, and all kind of foolishness is happening, all kind of bad calamities are going on throughout the world, are we just doing nothing, about it, then maybe your hat has blown off. You know what I'm saying? Because if you are of God, and if you do the things of God, as it says, the kingdom of God is not in word, but is in power, that you do something about what's going on in this world system of this darkness and wickedness and, and come back the kingdom of darkness is what the true ideal of the kingdom of God is supposed to be all about. But if your your hat, where's your helmet? Where's your crown? You know what I'm saying? It must have blew it off by somebody's wave wind doctrine that you believe. Yes, the, the only way the hat and the crown can blow off is when you believe the doctrine that is maybe 
well, that is false concerning the word of God that we're not aware of concerning Ephesians 4, 14. But let me continue on. Uh, frosty snowman. Do I got something else? Yep. Uh, frosty is made of snow. And in order for Frosty to continue to exist on the earth, he has to be in a temperature, cold temperature. He has to be in a cold temperature. He can't be in a hot temperature. He will melt. He only can be in a cold temperature. What is this about, you know, Christians? Christians, we're not supposed to, we are supposed to be in the presence of God. The presence of God is represent our cold temperature. That as much as we're in the presence of God and allowing God to heal us and, and deliver us and give us wisdom and, uh, of direction of understanding in his presence that, you know, we feel restoration and strengthen in that we can only exist. But if we are in the hot, the hot, of course, represents the thing, the world, we're in the world and doing things in the world, we will start melting. We will start melting and we will start melting. And, and those that are of Christ, that spirit, we start, like I said, this is a spiritual version. We'll start spiritually melting. You know what I'm saying? We start spiritually melting when we start going into the hot uh, things of this world that, you know, we're not. And watch this. The Bible. We start losing our form. We start losing the form or we come deformed or what it says, uh, Genesis 1, 2, without form. Yes, you start losing your form because you're in a hot place in the things of this world doing wrong things. You start losing your spiritual form. You, you don't prophesy like you used to. You don't read the Bible like you used to. You don't pray like you used to. You don't hang around Christians and fellowship the word of God like you used to. You don't do the spiritual normal things that you are supposed to do concerning as a Christian. And it's because you have been spending time in the things of this world that we need to be aware of, that we need to be about doing things of God and stay in the proper temperature that we can be who we are, that we can be who God transformed us to be. You know what I'm saying? And not participate, conform to this world and start melting and losing form and losing our spiritual image that we need to see ourselves of who we are. Genesis 1 26 made in the image and the likeness of God is what our image is. You know what I'm saying? It's not a melted image of us, you know, participating in wrong things and wrong activity with other people. We are made in his image and God formed us, shaped us, washed us white as snow. And we're supposed to be operating in the power of God concerning the hat. You know what I'm saying? Operating in salvation, helmet of salvation, uh, crown of life. And I want to add this addition to it. You know, I just meditated. He had a peace pipe. Well, the peace pipe represents, of course, this peace. We're supposed to be speaking Peace. Blessed are those that are the peacemaker. Are we making peace with our mouth or are we causing uh, violence with this mouth? Are we arguing with this mouth or are we making peace with this mouth? So we need to question if we truly are frosty, spiritual, frosty, the snowman. All right. We got the uh, joy, you know. Uh, the peace. I hope we just got, you know, I hope it's the love of God in Frosty's heart that, you know, he can love on the children that we need to be loving on one another and be about, you know, truly representing Jesus Christ. All right. I hope you enjoy my Frosty spiritual. Are you a spiritual Frosty snowman one? Y'all have a good, uh, day. And I hope and pray that you be watchful concerning tomorrow because it's going to be quite interesting what darkness may have in store for tomorrow that you need to be wide awake. I know y'all want to participate in this holiday, but be watchful as well as pray because there's a lot of stuff 
that may happen tomorrow or may happen after that day concerning what this day really means. And that's the message. God be the glory of him forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen.